What's up, guys? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Also, please smash that like button on the video and enjoy the show. I just got on like a flow. I, like I rode a wave and I rode it. I rode like the perfect wave. Yes, I got kidnapped. I got held by by Northern Valley Cartel for 21 days. Uh, Wait, what? Uh, yeah. back, back up. There was this. If you want, let's let's take a a coffee break and we'll go back to the Northern Valley when I got held for 21 days. And also I, I got held in, in, in Mexico. I almost got thrown into a pit of crocodiles. hundred hundred percent. We'll be right back to talk about 21 yeah. days in fucking Northern Valley and crocodiles. <laughs> All right. We are back from a little coffee break and you left us with quite a little cliffhanger right there. So there were two things you mentioned being taken captive by, the northern, what's it called again? Northern Valley. Northern Valley. Uh, I was going to, for yeah. 21 days, and then something about crocodiles. So I, I need you to spill the <laughs> beans on this. Okay, so we were working Cancun, and we were doing really well. And I brought a um, a, a type a relative, a, an aunt or distant relative, to handle some of the uh, money over there. And she went kind of nuts, and she started talking some things that weren't true. And to you know, make a long story short, it, it got back to Rasguño, and he wasn't too happy about it. And when I got back to Colombia, my partner tells me, hey, you should leave to Europe. You should leave to, like, <laughs> Mongolia. You should leave to somewhere because this guy wants you, and he's going to come after you and pick you up. Says he doesn't have to do that. He's my friend. I'll go see him right now. I hopped on a plane, and I went to talk to him. And I explained to him that, uh, you know, that that was not true. He had said that, you know, I was talking about – she had said that I was – skimming off the top, that I was talking bad about him, that I was acting like the boss of Cancun, and none of that was true. Needless, uh, still, he said, well, until this gets clarified, you're staying here. <laughs> so <laughs> they, um, they kept me there for 21 days. The funny thing is that, you know, at first I was in an apartment and I was uh, handcuffed to a, to a bed, to a steel bed that was nailed to the to the floor, and then I was taken to a farm with a pool. You're taken to a farm with a pool? Yeah, and, and simply they said, listen, you know, we're not going to keep in that apartment. You know, things got to get cleared up. But, you know, you're more free here. You can just sit around the pool, read. We'll get you some books, whatever. <laughs> but if you try to leave, they're not going to kill you. The order is not to kill you uh, for now. <laughs> but they will shoot you in the leg, and then we will take out that bullet. And the one that's going to take out the bullet is me, and there's no anesthesia. <laughs> so we would uh, – and, and the guy that was saying this to me wanted me dead because he was kind of jealous that I had a good relationship with his boss. Mm. I was going, so I stayed there for a while, and then while I stayed there, I mean, I got kind of bored, and, and I told the uh, the bodyguards that were taking care of me, you know, let's go get some pizza, man. I'm, I'm sick and tired of having rice and beans all day. And I convinced them. They took me to get pizza. I hear I'm a guy that's kidnapped, you know, and you're not supposed to go out and get pizza. I convinced these guys to take me to go get pizza. And when we came back, sure enough, Rasguño finds, I you son of a bitch, what do you think this is? A holiday camp going out <laughs> to get pizza? So the, the bodyguards were more scared than I was because, they thought they, they were going to get whacked for, for taking me out to get pizza. Then I told them, uh, you know what? I don't have a driver's license. Since we're not doing anything. I'd like to take this opportunity to go get a driver's license. And they look at me and says, let, let, let me tell you something. I, we don't know if you may be going through a crisis because I know you, you know that everybody that's been here has not left alive. Mm. And, you know, just to be on on the level with you, one of us is going to have to do it. None of us want to do it. You are a very nice guy. You are different than everybody else that's come come through this situation. And we've already drawn straws as to who's going to do it. You don't know who it is, and we won't tell you, but nobody's happy about it. And it's going to happen fast. You won't even know it's coming. But 
you know, dead people don't drive. Mm. So why are you want a driver's license when, you know, you're probably not going to leave here. I mean, in any condition to drive. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, man. I mean, Ross is my friend. I convinced him to get me a driver's license. We went to get the driver's license. He says, who the fuck? He found out. I own the driver's license place. I own the pizza place. I own the phone. I own everything in this town. I know everything. He was pissed. Well, the bottom line is that it, things got cleared up. I paid, you know, we settled accounts because whenever you're working with somebody, you have 300 kilos on this route, 200 mm -hmm. kilos this, but we settled accounts, paid out for almost 5 million, settled accounts, and I was let go. They told me, you can leave. You're good. Yeah. But most people don't get let go. But you weren't afraid during this? I tell you the truth, when when they grabbed when when they told me I couldn't leave and they put me in the car, I remember I was in the passenger seat. We were going through El Valle del Cauca, which is a lot of sugar sugar land, and I was just looking out. I was like my mind was in limbo. Mm. Behind me was El Sargento Suarez, and behind me was Chorizo, uh, a hitman that they had, and I, I knew them both. And you know, I don't know what to tell you. I was like, I wasn't mad. I wasn't screaming. I wasn't this. I wasn't that. I was just like blank. My life was blank. And my wife was seven months pregnant. And yes, I did think, you know, somehow or the other, I never really thought that I was not going to make it. Because I don't know what it would be to think that you're not going to make it to know that you're going to die. Mm. I was very worried, but I knew, I knew in my heart of hearts that Rasguño was not going to kill me because he was my friend. So there's there are rare people on this earth, and I don't know many of them, who seem to just be born without, forget the anxious gene, they're, they're born without the fear gene. They, there's just something about them that they can be in the worst of a situation and their hands steady no matter what. And, I mean, I wasn't in these situations with you. I can only take it from looking at you now and how you talk about it and hearing the stories as, as you tell them. But you seem to be one of those people because I don't know how – like obviously you had some anxiety in your career. That was, that was something we've talked about I think off camera. But like fear – that seemed to miss you in the gene pool. Fear was one, that time in Venezuela. but Yeah, you said there again, were a couple exceptions, but yeah, still. But still, I was proactive. I didn't sit around being fearful. I got the fuck out of there. Right. We hopped on a boat and hightailed out of there. I was very concerned in Cuba. But in this situation, this was so strange because it's it's a fact that when they pick you up like that and they retain you, Mm -hmm. The best thing you can hope for is a quick death. That's why the, the bodyguard told me he thought I was losing it. Because who, who doesn't this guy realize he's going to die? He's mm -hmm. asking to go get a driver's license. Dead people don't drive. This guy <laughs> actually, maybe he's losing it. So he, he kind of settled me in and kind of centered me and told me, you know, put your feet on the fucking ground. One of us is going to have to kill you. None of us want to do it, but one of us has to. So finally things got settled and I was let go. When you were let go, did you think that they were going to shoot you on the way out? No. Like it was fake? No. When I was let go, I was let go. And they thought this motherfucker is going to grab the next taxi to Pereira, which is the nearest town with an airport, city with an airport. <laughs> and hop on a plane and go to fucking Lower East Mongolia. <laughs> you know what I did? I got on a taxi and I went to Rasguño's hotel and I checked in and I had no money because I had no money because I, I was just came from a kidnapping. <laughs> and I said, no, put it on the, uh, in La Cuenta del Señor. Oh, no. <laughs> I went to the bar, had a couple drinks, ordered breakfast, 
relaxed. Oh. And the next day, I call him. And I go, ah, que hubo, hombre? ¿Cómo va? And he goes, eh, me imagino que estás en, en la puta mierda. <laughs> and I go, no. Estoy aquí en el Mariscal Robledo, tu hotel en Cartago. No, hijo de puta, no. ¿Cómo va? No, no seas tan hijo de puta. ¿Cómo? Hombre, es que tenemos que hablar. No tenemos que hablar un culo, pero qué loco. ¿Cómo que? que hijo de puta. He was going, what the fuck? This motherfucker's crazy. I checked. It. He came to see me at the hotel. I, I, he, he was like, there... I have nothing against you, but there's no more business. Try to get it through your fucking head. There's no more. And then I said, well, no, okay, I can understand that. And then he says, well, then, then leave. You're free. Leave. <laughs> I goes, shit, but you left me with no money. Can you give me a hundred grand? <laughs> and he goes, you know what? Tengo 50 en el maletín. Te voy a dar los 50. And he, he had a, a black Harley Davidson maletín, and he gave me 50 grand. And he told me to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> but he says, mejor no. No. Te me quedas aquí puesto un minuto. He called my wife. My wife. So she would come from Bogota. Pick me up and make sure. I got the fuck out. That, that, that I, I, I got the fuck out of there. Oh, my God. Then when my wife came, that's, she really thought. That on the way from Cartago to Pereira, that's when they were going to kill us. Mm, so she was scared. Yeah, but I, I knew they were going to kill us. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.